Welcome! Today we're going to start Civilization VI. I'm excited. This is one of my favorite games ever. Civilization VI is uh, similar to Civ 1, Civ 2, 3, 4, 5, lots of different uh, offshoots of those, uh, expansion sets, things like that. Uh, probably my favorite ever was Civ 2. Definitely played that the most uh, as a kid. Um, Civ 6 is exciting. It's definitely more high tech, more advanced, a lot of different things going on. It's got like five different layers of uh, strategies you got to keep track of while you're playing. Um, I'm big into strategy games and I've always liked geography so you can kind of learn a little bit about other countries and the, and the cities that they have and the cultures a little bit. Obviously they're subjective and they're expressive but that kind of makes it you know more interesting. Um, this game's been popular for a while uh, since it came out I think three or four years ago. Um, today we're going to be doing the vanilla version, that's the basic version. Um, pretty much no expansions, I think I have Aztecs that kind of came with this. Um, at some point I'll probably get the expansions in the future, but not right now. Um, the, the, what I want to do, my, my main goal is to get to Deity. Deity is the most difficult and I've noticed that uh, there is potential for moving up in difficulty. In the past, you kind of got stuck in prints. There's, it's very difficult to improve. Uh, but I think that I have potential here. I, I've beaten uh, all the different difficulties up so far, uh, king and below. And I wanted to start next with emperor. And I know that the other civilizations are up to 40% or uh, more advanced in a lot of different things. I didn't specifically look at their advantages. You can look that up if you want. Um, but they're definitely going to be faster in production, faster in science, uh, things like that. So we're definitely looking out uh, to try to improve. We've got different strategies I want to try, um, different favorite parts of the game that I want to do. So definitely want to uh, explore and have fun here. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to try to do this step by step, explaining different parts of the game. This will be a bit of a tutorial. It's my first video here, so uh, feel free to fast forward if you're an expert at the beginning stuff, but it'll definitely be good to practice. Also help to hit all the different points. And one of the cool things about live streaming is I can have some of you viewers point out things that I mess up on. I'm sure I, you know, it won't be perfect. Um, n nobody ever is. You know, if I forget to do a technology, feel free to mention it on the chat. I'll try to keep track of that, and um, that'll help out. Um, it'll be fun. We'll, we'll get to this. We'll, we'll try to win, um, and I've got lots of different ideas, and I'll enjoy doing this. So um, feel free to join in. Backseat Gaming's allowed. Uh, feel free to uh, give me your ideas, um, and... We'll get started in a few moments. I'm just trying to make sure I have everything lined up. All right. Here's the game. I jumped forward to the mod screen. Uh, mods are improvements that you can make. Um, they, they're basically installed to be used. And what happens is the user can find different things, ways to make advantages. So, um, they could say turn off all units that are like this, you know, or they can change different looks. And you can see there's a lot of different possibilities for options. Like here, they already had some mods for multiplayer scenarios. These came with the game. I'm not choosing a scenario this time, so don't have to worry about that. Um, they also have another mode where you can shuffle the technologies and the civics if you want, just to like mix it up and make it more interesting. I'm not going to do that mode this time, but definitely makes the game you know, more interesting if you beat it the regular way, you want to try it a different way. That's one of the cool things about this version, there's lots of different ways to win. It's not just domination, you can win by cultural, you can win by religion, that's kind of an interesting way, um, just by converting everybody else. Um, there's way you can win just by long term, but there's more at the end. Um, there's cultural. That's a, that's a tricky one. You built the most 
Book of Wonders, and your, your culture score is the highest. So you could win that way. Typically, I don't usually start with a specific strategy. I've found that domination is probably the fastest and easiest, so I might lean towards that with the higher difficulty, but you never know. Maybe my civilization will be a really strong religious one like Spain or Arabia, and I'll want to try to push that way. Sometimes that way can be quick, too. Um, because you have really high faith. Faith is one of the units that you use to propel yourself forward. So the only one that I have that's probably gonna modify it a little bit is something called CQUI, Community Quick User Interface. And I'll mention this probably again while we're playing. This will change the way it looks and it makes it a lot easier. It'll make some of the things appear first, um, look better, especially like one of my favorite parts is your builder. Uh, can see which parts haven't been improved yet and see which parts need work the the uh, part will shade in a certain color and that'll kind of cue you in to pay attention to that or build more builders to support builders are key because you want to make sure you have the most uh, resources coming in your, your production your food things like that we'll get back to that but i'll just show you what i have turned on all right so we'll start up a single player I'm going to say play, uh, create game, uh, standard rules, random leader, difficulty, let's do emperor, I've never beaten it on emperor, um, I'd like to try that, choose map type, I like to choose shuffle just because it's the most interesting, and that's one of my favorite things about this game, you can randomize it and you never know what to expect, so that makes the beginning of the game very exciting, you can you don't know where you're going to go, you don't know who you're going to see, you don't know what the land's going to be like. It makes the exploring at the beginning with your scouts really fun and, and interesting. So I'll go ahead with shuffle, select map. Um, we could do, I like the idea of small, standard would take a long time when I take, when I play standard this game takes forever because you have to go track everyone down. Tiny also could be interesting. I've never tried dual or tiny, uh, but I think small is a good one. It's kind of reasonable and pretty small. I'm not going to choose that tech and civic shuffle um, just to see what the advanced setup are, but I'm not going to change it so you can see what we're, what we're up against. Um, it's going to be approximately nine city states. I think that means up to nine. So if in, it could be seven or eight if there's a lot of war and things like that. Um, every every wonder. Here are the victory conditions: culture, domination, religious, science, and score. I've never won by science. Science to me takes a long time. You got to build every single thing to colonize Mars. That's like six different giant wonders that can only be done in a specific order. So you have to be way ahead of everybody. Usually by then, if I'm way ahead, I just conquer them because you know con attacking. I think their user has a little bit of an advantage. You can see when people are weak and you know what terrain to stand on. The UI, the user, I mean the AI is not quite as smart. So I'll go ahead and hit start and see who we get. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Cast your net wide, All old Trajan. Lead to Rome. Emperor so it looks like if of you build a city, Rome, you'll automatically your legions make stand at the ready to, to march out and establish capital, the largest empire the world has ever Rome. seen. Looks like it'll if you can truly get all uh, roads to lead to Rome. Yours will be an empire yeah. of great Plus riches and luxuries. Surely then our out. citizens will proclaim you as their Bats best ruler. Or a unique district. You have to look at that. Princeps. It looks like instead of aqueducts you can build baths. Aqueducts help you uh, with extra... I'll, to, I'll, I'll read up on this. When we get in, we'll, I'll look specifically at what these advantages are. Legions, extremely strong early land units. So we'll definitely probably look to conquer somebody early on. All right, here we are. I'm going to go ahead and look at the Civilopedia. If you look at that, it's a question mark over here. And I'm going to try Rome. 
Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Um, if in range of the capital, it'll build a road to it automatically. That'll help you with speed and moving things around. And trade routes get plus one gold for passing through trade routes in your own cities. So that's in addition to the already one gold that you would normally get. Um, historical context, you can read all about it right there. Let's look at baths. Baths are extra housing, it looks like. Cities that don't have existing fresh water, oh that's, that's typical, provides a city with a source of fresh water from an adjacent river, lake, oasis, or mountain. So you'll definitely want to keep track of where the rivers are, where the lakes are, where the oases are, and where the mountains are. And if your city is right next to it, you might need to build an aqueduct to increase the housing because you can get up to six housing if you do that. Um, if you already have fresh water, you just get plus two. So it's probably not as useful there. Ah, here we go. So a bath gives you plus two housing. So your ci our cities are hopefully going to get pretty big, especially if I build a lot of baths. So instead of plus two, it's plus four, and instead of plus six, it's plus eight. Oh my gosh. And plus one amenity. Amenities are your happiness boosters. So for every amenity, you can spread that to four different cities. So you want to keep track of amenities and make sure you've got enough around your civilization or the happiness will go down. When happiness goes down, your people start to get upset. If you're in a war, you might start getting barbarians, things like that. Um, if people are upset, they don't produce as fast, your production goes down. If they're happy, they produce faster. There's a specific number, like 10% higher, things like that. I'm going to check something real quick. Is everybody seeing the civilizations in the back? I'm seeing... I wonder if it's appearing right there. Alright. Pretend you can all see this bath screen and it's just my connections. A little iffy. Alright, so let's go back. Okay, so this is your settler. Your settler starts your city. Again, it's good to build near fresh water if you have it. Regular water's a uh, little bit useful. You just get uh, big plus two if you're next to that. Is this regular water? If you mouse over, it'll pop up and tell you what it is. I think. Yeah, okay, so this is coast and lake. So it may or may not be fresh water, not sure. Um, cattle. So these are good. They're bonus resources. They help you a little bit. I have these little things on top. These are the resources. Plus two food, plus two production. Uh, plus one food, plus one production. The most useful are the ones that have four in them. So these horses are extremely useful. Teas are going to be helpful because it gives you science. Cattle, really good. It helps you with food. It'll help you with growth quickly. Let's check over here, coast and lake. So it's an interesting. I, I wish we had a spot with only one and then we could build a city that could uh, reach both. Maybe if we build a city here and a harbor on the other side, uh, well, that's still going to be kind of awkward. Um, You'll notice that land units later on can walk on water. That'll be useful. And in the water you can see there are shallow areas and uh, deep water areas. Shallow areas are the places you can walk at first. Uh, when, once you get the uh, once you get the technology to do that, sailing will allow your builders to get on on the water, and further you can get shipbuilding. Once you get shipbuilding, land units can embark. All right, so then we have to decide where to build a city. 
If you click on the settler, it'll tell you where you're allowed to build a city. Everything's clear, so I can build anywhere. Uh, one of the advantage on hills is you'll have a little bit higher defense. But you also could build a mine there, and if you want to build a mine, uh, that'll help you with production. So that's a good spot to save for mining. Um, I think from here, I can see T, horses, cattle, pearls. Eventually we'll get some crabs and fish. That'll probably be a while, but we'll get to that point when we get a lot bigger. Forest is pretty helpful. I think right where I'm at is probably a good spot. I like it. It's not perfect, but it'll do. I'm going to expand. The probably first expansion will probably be the, the horses or the cattle. So I'm going to go ahead and build my first city. Immediately because I'm on a coast, I'm allowed to boost sailing. So one of the advantages of this game is you get to keep track of boosting technologies. Um, boosting means half of the needed turns required to build it will will go away. So instead of requiring however many turns it was before, you cut that in half. That's a huge advantage to keep track of. And let's start out, and if I remember, I'll try to do this with the rest of them. Right now they have it called Rome. This game you can actually change the name of the cities. And what I like to do is take subscribers and randomize their names. So right before I, I created a database of all the subscribers, um, and for, for my case, I'm, I'm pretty new, so I'm gonna also include some followers and friends and things like that, and see who the first city is. So I'm going through my list that I randomized, took everybody's name, and the first name on the list is here. It is Ruben83. There we go. All right, and with your first city, you get to choose your production. Um, I think starting out a scout is going to be very useful. I need to know where I want to go next, who I want to avoid, uh, what defense you know to prepare. So I think a scout would be good. Another good thing to start out with, especially with this difficulty, would be a slinger. A slinger might be is a ranged unit. It's good also, it'll be good if we bump into some barbarians. Um, some people do scout slinger, slinger scout. I think I'll start with scout, it's quick. Um, it, it moves fast, it's got three movement points. I can dart north or south wherever the warrior does not go. So I'll start out with that. Um, choose my research. So here's where I get to choose. I, I like to use the technology tree to see what can be used in the future. Right now we have the options of pottery, animal husbandry, mining, astrology, or sailing. I think since we're Rome, we're probably not going to go for a cultural victory. Maybe. We might be able to out advance everybody, but it's very difficult with higher difficulties and religious cultural tend to go for holy sites and astrology but I think I'm going to avoid that for now. Let's stick to something where we have needed resources soon. We do have a couple mountains so I know a quarry would be nice. I saw um, cattle and horses so a pasture is probably going to be nice. Eeny meeny miny mo. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think animal husbandry would be good? Yeah, I think I think that's a good start. Um, by the time I get a builder out, I should have expanded to one of those two points. Those are our two probably most important uh, next square, uh, tiles to go to, right there and there. So let's go with animal husbandry. There's no way of boosting this, so I just have to uh, hard hard research. It means go all the way through. Next unit. So here we've got. Looks like to the north there's a little bit of ice. I have a feeling there's not much to see up there, maybe not as many civilizations. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by going south. Maybe I'll send the scout north if that helps. Um, I want to maximize the units. You'll see the movement is two. So I want to stick to 
places without mountains or forests to be able to get the most movement per turn. Uh, continue. So I can't go into either of these, so I just have to hit next turn. Ah, so here we've got more. This looks like a long, stringy world. Um, we got marsh here. We've got rice here, rice here. So this is already looking like, you know, a pretty good spot if we want to build another city over here. But maybe we want to build one on the other coast, so we'll see. We'll keep going. Just thinking out loud. Part of CQUI what I like is it gives you the overall score and of all the different main resources. Your strength is probably the most important one to look at to see how strong people are. Um, we probably don't want to go to war with somebody that's 10 times stronger than us because they'll probably kick our butts. And they see our strength too, so they're going to adapt their strategy specifically based on that. Next turn, warrior. Let's head up here. Looks like that spot right there, that might be a good city. No overlap with the main city. Just keeping things in mind. Once we get a settler, we'll probably start pinning things and we'll kind of choose where we want to build it. Just as expected, the first expansion was to the horses. So I'm glad we did hus husbandry, animal husbandry, so we can start building a pasture and maximize that. And the next one's probably going to be water, yep, or I mean not water, uh, cattle. Gonna head southeast, here we go. I don't want to get too far from the city, but there's not a whole lot to defend, so if somebody comes and wipes me out, they wipe me out. It was quick, glad to get it over with quickly. The uh, other thing about this difficulty is I think the computer gets some advantages as well. Oh, this looks like a large lake. Fresh water, that's always good to build on. Maybe I need to build on the fresh water right here. This would be good because it can contact here and get the fresh water here. This down here is a tribal village. These give something advantageous to you. So I want to grab them before the, uh, before the computer does. At his best, man is the noblest of all animals. Separated from law and justice, he is the worst. Culture. Culture discovery. The first thing is always code of laws. Here's the tree for code of laws. You can do Ilkum. This will speed up builders. Oh, I'm sorry, craftsmanship. This provides Ilkum, which will speed up builders. Foreign trade. This is good um, for trade routes, naval units, things like that. I think we're going to start with this one. Builders is going to be key. If we had discovered a second continent and we got the boost, that'll be good to get. Maybe we'll look for that while we're exploring. If we haven't improved three tiles by the time we're at six turns, then we can switch over to here, get started on this one, and then catch up on that one later, and that'll provide less time wasted. Wasted time is when you're producing something that you're already going to have boosted, so that you could have not needed. Along with culture, uh, culture discoveries are government uh, abilities. So right now we can do choose different abilities. This is military, economic. We only get a little bit with chieftain. You're starting out one. We'll want to advance pretty quickly so we can have more options. Um, because we only have one city, producing one cult production probably doesn't help much. Faith and gold will help. So because it's a couple different things and these are possibly a little bit more later on, they'll help. It's only for the capital, so maybe when we get some more cities we'll do some urban planning, but I think we'll start out with God King. Military policies. Uh, we don't have any pol any uh, barbarian scene yet, but if we do stumble on one, this plus five is huge. We will dominate them. 
Uh, or we could double recon units. We have no recon units at the moment. It's kind of a coin flip. I'll say uh, combat and strength, and then maybe when we get another one, we'll switch. Another technology. You can do a free switch every time you discover a new cultural icon. Alright, I can move two if I move over here. This is a very spider webby kind of tangled stuff. This is kind of interesting. Alright, we got our scout. Our scout, I think, will either go southwest or north. I think we'll go north and kind of go around here. He can move quickly, so hopefully he'll catch up and go down there. Next, I said slinger. Slinger, it's always important to have defense. I think uh, slinger is a good key one here. That's one of the things about this game, this civilization. Civilization 6 requires a lot more defense and military stuff. Back in Civ 2, you just science above everybody and then just stop them with uh, superior units. It's a little bit more complicated this time. You have a lot more action. People are a lot more prone to it, uh, declaring war on you for any reason. There's lots of different reasons why people come up with excuses to declare war on you. And barbarians are rampant. They're everywhere. I'm surprised I haven't bumped into any by now. I'll cross my fingers that we don't, but um, we'll see. Uh, I said I come here. Here, I already found a scout barbarian. I have plus five barbarian strength, so if I fight with them, hopefully I'll be able to win. They're running away. If the scout bumps into your city, he will get an exclamation point, which means he's alerted, and then he will return back to his base, and then they'll start producing military units, and they'll start attacking it. It's very annoying. Uh, promotion available. So warriors can gain a promotion, and with the promotion you can get different abilities. Um, strength, defense, and they all lead to different things. Um, I'll start with the basic battle cry looks good. If he was more expecting to be defensive, then I would probably choose that other one, but I think that's a good start. Maintenance orders. I like these alerts because they just zoom in for you, so you don't have to go around and see who needs to do what. You can just wait for them to call you and say, hey, we need to do this. Um, I'll head this direction. I kind of want to see what this program is. Oh, there's the camp. There's no way the scout is going to beat him, but the scout here, being on a hill, will have an advantage. If the scout, this enemy scout chooses to attack me, I'll have an advantage. I am fond of pigs. Ah. Dogs look up to us. Into another barbarian. Cats look down on us. Pigs treat us as equals. I like that quote. That's funny. Animal husbandry is done. Let's go ahead with mining. We've got some mines near us. Another important one is archery. We we'll want to grab that soon. If I kill somebody with a slinger, that'll be definitely even more advantageous. Let's go ahead and attack here. They are on grassland defense. That means no advantage, really. So I'll go ahead and start attacking. Last thing we want is for one of them to start bringing forces to us. Minor victory here. One of the cool things about attacking is you can uh, you can choose to heal. We're going to get over here in defensive position to try to block them. And do our attack here. They're starting to run away. I don't think this warrior will ever catch a scout, but he can move two in this direction. So, we'll go ahead. so there's our enemy base, or or the first barbarian base. So these might be our first two enemies to attack and defend from, which is useful to know. I want to see which of these two tiles we're going for and which one they want. So you can see the white unit is where we uh, have a unit that's working. Right here we have two here and one here. I think we want food more because food allows you to grow faster and if you grow faster you can put more uh, 
tiles. So I should have grabbed this one sooner. I was distracted by the barbarians. That's my excuse. <laughs> I wonder what... Alright, let's see. He's here. I guess they're probably more defensive. Let's look over here see where we're at. I don't want to move there because their spearmen has a 25... Oh, well that's if I attack them. They have a lot of advantages sitting there. So I don't want to attack them in their place. I'm just going to fortify until healed. Or skip turn. Does it do much difference? I don't know. I think the longer you stay in place fortified, the stronger your defense is. Um, it says major victory. Let's go ahead and attack. I can always heal in between. me back to attack again. Alright, finish the slinger. Slinger gets, will be important. I think another warrior, since we have a uh, potential for needing more military uh, because of the barbarians top and below. Barbarians are stronger at first than other, other civilizations. Um, they could attack you. They could destroy your city and burn it down. I think they can burn down your city if you have no defense. Um, I don't think they would, but I want to be prepared just in case. So I'll go, how about warrior, builder, warrior, and then maybe a settler? We'll see. We'll see how things go with these two. Uh, let's go ahead and get the spearman ready to fight off the scout if he comes closer. see what's in this direction. I don't want the scout to be too close to them. The last thing I need is an excuse for them. Here is another... I like how it's shaded in pink. So we can see this is a tribal village, so we'll get something from this. And it gave us a boost towards state workforce. That's huge. So we don't even have to discover another continent. Our culture of, of state workforce can be switched to with an advantage. Uh, let's see, culture specifics wise. Let's switch to. Oh no. State workforce. Okay, so that wasn't the. I, I thought we had that as an option. We don't have it as an option. Um, but let's go ahead so we don't waste anymore. I, I should have stopped this at halfway. I made the stupid mistake of making that. So I'm going to switch to foreign trade. We need to work this one. Maybe we'll hit a second continent and boost it. Maybe we'll improve three. These are our possibilities. I said the slinger would hang out here looking for that scout. If we kill it, the scout with the slinger will get a boost. They built a warrior. I don't know how they did that. If they saw me or if I attacked them that that caused them to. Uh, but we're definitely going to want to stay away from him with the scout. He's going to get his butt kicked if he goes that way. Let's try southwest. I didn't realize this was butt. Alright, so this is another area of water. Let's see, slinger wise. He's good with range, but he's not good with melee. So I want to stay a little bit of a distance from that warrior. I definitely want to stay in the hills too, that's a higher defense. Who deserves more credit than the wife of a coal miner? Spearmen and warrior are moving out. Maybe I could sneak in and knock out this city. I wonder why it's on fire. Should I go here and try to sneak up on it? Let's go for it. Ooh, another scout over there. Alright, so I can do a ranged attack here, that's a major victory. Or I can scoot back to the hills. I can also move over here and attack this spearman, that would also be a major victory. 
is tricky. I have to choose this one here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead with doing the free major victory on him because then he'll be weaker and he might get scared away and if he attacks me on the hills I'll at least have that in defense. We'll see what happens. I've got another warrior coming. Uh, he's being built right now so that'll definitely help. Alright, so mining is done. Should we go ahead with archery? I think archers would be very useful. Pottery is going to be useful too, because then I can harvest bonus stuff, like cattle. Uh, let's go ahead and start archery and switch to pottery. Before we get to halfway, if we haven't finished them off anymore. They did attack me. Oh, it looks like he finally fully healed, and look at this, major victory. This will bring us down, bring him down to almost dead and barely hurt us. So I'm glad we did that. We can finish that off. Scout, I was trying to sneak in here and take this, but we got a big lake in the way. And if I move forward, um, is this a hill? It is a hill. So this is something um, that will keep you stuck in place. If you see these, this means that you're this is locking you into position so if I move to here I can't continue over to here you can only do one thing you can't move in and out of being adjacent to somebody so I'm going to wait until he moves um, I suppose I could go to the hills and get some better defense what's his melee strength 10 what's his melee strength um, 25 so I probably want to stay back yeah, I think I'll just skip turn for now. He's going to do his range attack. This is a free attack. That means it doesn't provide any potential for loss there. They attacked me and I lost. Or, and I won. So that's the bonus that we were looking for. The slinger defeated a, a unit. It's a bonus to archery. I'll be done with archery very soon. Archers are a lot stronger. and They're definitely going to be useful here. Here I'm going to finish him off. Done. Got it. Barbarian just... And because I discovered another continent, I finished my boost for foreign trade. That was good timing right there. And because I beat its Barbarian Outpost, I got a bonus for military tradition. That was a, definitely a good start here. This is we're off to a good track. Let's look at... There's a little viewer over here. It's called... Uh, your lenses. So if you do lenses and you choose continent, it'll be a different color what's the other continent. So just to see, there's some uh, places that get bonuses if they go to other continents. Like if you're Britain, you can get bonuses if you build cities in other continents. And there's other technologies that'll improve things like plus 20% gold in other continents, things like that later on. So it's good to know what your potential places to go to. Because this is destroyed, I think we're probably okay with moving up to a settler. We looks like this area is pretty clear. Uh, north does look like hopefully if I get this, it'll be pretty clear in a, in a few minutes. Um, we'll see what we want to do with settler. Yeah, because I think this warrior is going to go up and help finish this off, and we'll have definitely room. So I think settler, maybe settler would be next. Maybe Settler Builder, Archer, something like that. We'll see. Definitely need to heal. Definitely want to stay away from him. Being on the hill will be an advantage. If I get a promotion, this will be a quick heal. So I'll go ahead and take that promotion. Um, combat Strength versus Districts. If I was fighting a lot of cities and districts, these are, this is actually my favorite route to go. But because he's kind of hurt, I definitely want to get this land unit advantage first. Once he gets larger, uh, stronger, we'll definitely want archers with increased attacks. Um, I can also move him back to the city and uh, promote him to be an archer, um, evolve him there. So that's definitely a possibility. But I'll go ahead and evolve him first. Time. I needed that quick heal. Hoping he comes towards me, I'll still stay in place for now. Skip turn. 
they still have that other scout out there on the left. There must be another barbarian outpost up there. That'll be our, our next attacking area. We'll probably be coming up here, bringing those very good top. Yeah. Alright, we finish. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. So this warrior is hurt. He got this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fortify until he healed. Um, this one's hurt. That's interesting. This might be the same one that I attacked earlier. Let's go ahead and continue meeting him. We'll finish him off. That would always be. Uh, let's see. If I move him up, that'll be closer towards the base, and I can do a free attack. Let's go ahead and do that. Free attack is a ranged attack. Every oh, nation shit. lives by happen. exchanging. That's okay. I'll just stay there and keep pestering them with free attacks for the moment. Finish foreign trade. Finish that unit. Let's start start out with the civics. Opening the civics. Another thing we can move towards is early empire or mysticism. Mysticism is useful if we want to start a religion. Religions are good if we're afraid somebody might do a religious victory. There's also advantages with faith and things like that. Early empire is good because it provides a uh, path towards your new uh, new and government and this will open up more openings. You can see two one in one instead of just one in one. This will help the overall civilization grow a lot better. Uh, craftsmanship, do I want to start with that? It's only two turns. Let's go ahead and knock that out and maybe work towards the state re resource. In fact, I can do something where you click here and it'll start with this and it'll go to that. A quick way to get started there. I might need this warrior up here. I'll go ahead and move that up. Scout, let's keep trying to finish this off. Uh, let's move into this place just in case they attack me. And fortify until healed. I don't know if skipping a turn or fortify till healed helps more with defense. I'll just say fortify till healed, but I have to remember to come back to him to finish him off if he doesn't move. He'll probably run away. So, whatever. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get him, I'm not too worried. I don't see any new uh, places he would run back to, and we might catch him in the middle with a warrior or somebody. So, let's go ahead and... Let's do my free attack right here. Next, I said I was going to do Settler. Does that sound good? Yeah, I think so too. The reason it's good to start with more cities is the more cities you have, the more growth you have. You have two cities growing instead of just one. So anytime you have an opportunity to grow, that's going to be very useful in this game. One of the strategies I want to use in this game is to grow to try to have at least 40% more cities than everybody. So I think the other, other civilizations don't grow forever. They kind of slow down growth, especially if they bump into people. But I want to keep growing or taking over cities so we always have at least 40% more cities than everybody. Make up for the advantage, the, mili the uh, difficulty advantage that they have. I like this reminder. This is a new thing with CQUI. They remind you when it's time to change policies. So I finished the craftsman. Uh, so, oh, they, I, I can choose. They unlock new things. So if you, if you want to change your policies with this new uh, discovery, you can. Uh, don't, oh, the new one was the caravan series plus two gold for trade routes. I don't have any trade routes now, so I think I'll keep it where they are. Next turn, I need him here to provide some kind of a defense in case this guy gets started to be attacked on. Otherwise, I'll just keep doing three attacks here. Maybe they'll let me finish him off. That'd be great if I can finish off. May the so forces of evil become confused while there. your arrow is on its way to the target. <laughs> That's a good one too. Finished civil uh, science here. We got the archer archeries completed. Let's see what do we want to do next? 
you want to do horseback riding, that's going to take forever. Pottery is only six. Masonry. I don't have any boost for any of these. Hopefully soon I'll have this bronze working one so I can kill the three barbarians. If this were a heavy military, like if I had discovered the other civilizations already and I needed that, then I would probably choose some kind of a military defense. But I don't see any right now, so I think we're going to go ahead and pottery and get that out. I don't have any boost for that one anyway, so. Let's head on over here with the warrior. Finish him off. There's our bonus. I got my third barbarian like on cue right there. Bronze working has advanced considerably. So that's definitely something we'll choose in a future time. Um, it says next turn, but it looks like I completed my craftsmanship. Oh, I already chose the next turn. That's right, because they did that ahead of time. Definitely want to try to get our this as soon as possible. Um, but this has already been boosted, so this one might be. We'll see. If we grow to beyond six, are we looking? Three. And that, the settler's going to knock me back by one, so I'm not going to get that anytime soon. We might want to go the other route. We'll see. Alright, we got the warrior here. Um. Looks like we have a base here, so I finally discovered somebody else. It's yellow. That could be... Egypt is yellow. Let's see who we got. Здравствуйте. Ah, it's Russia. Russia. Russia has an advantage where when you build a city, it automatically expands the city to be larger. This, this is probably my favorite one I've used so far. Um, Rush is definitely a easy, to, to me it feels easy to beat people because you're already advantaged by getting the bonus resources every time you build a city. And bonus resources is so key, that's like practically like get, getting an automatic builder. Honor to meet you, sir. Let me show you a nearby city. Love a sample of your hospitality. That, because I beat, found somebody, it boosted my writing. This is good. This is a uh, very useful. Slinger, let's see if I can do it. Yep. Melee in there. Got some gold. This is I'm getting rich here. I got 226 already. Warrior, I'm gonna go stake out this other one where that other scout came from. Try to get that out of the way. Last thing we need is barbarians to slow us down. I have sent you a trade delegation bearing gifts of the finest caviar. Mmm. Please enjoy. Your delegation's most welcome. One other advantage with the Ru with the uh, Russians is they get technology that gets discovered by other people. It's one of the keys to uh, see that if they're far behind in technology, they will quickly steal your technology and move up. They get like an advantage where it requires less to catch up. Right now they have a solid line. This means they've already got through their technology to get that and I can't go across into that territory freely. If I try to move there, they'll call that a declaration of war. So I definitely want to avoid making them upset early on. I'm just going to keep exploring southeast here. I'll get here later maybe on the back. Still exploring, looking for the barbarians. Look at we found, we found a city-state. City-states are places that just have one city. Uh, the entire city is the entire civilization. They are like not a civilization, but not a human. They're kind of in between. This provides some of the randomness of the game, kind of makes it open-ended and a lot of possibilities. They provide advantages to you throughout the game. They're little, but 
they're also very important because you need every little thing to help you. Um, you can also declare war on them. You can ask for them to be on their side, your side and get all their military units. Um, you can find out what the specifics are with each city, with, with each city-state. Um, this one is a culture one, that's why it's in purple. You get plus culture if you send an envoy to them. In your capital, also for every theater district if you have three. And if you have six, you can get even more. And if you're the suzerain, the suzerain is the person who has the most envoys that you have sent to them, then you can get a special advantage. This one says your trade routes get plus two culture and plus one gold for every specialty district in your origin city. So this makes uh, trade to them very advantageous. And since I'm a trade person, this is probably a place I'm going to want on my side. Relationships. They've seen Russia and Rome, which is me. Nobody else involved yet. This is zero envoys to them so far. And if I send them a trade route, I get a bonus envoy. So to get my first one, I might send my first trade route to them, although that is awfully far. I think it might be better to just stick to my own cities. We'll see. We'll see what the where the second city is. We're getting close to time to choose for our next location. Uh, let's kind of get an idea here. Do we want to go north? I know there's barbarians up here, but not a lot. I'm not too afraid of being attacked if you go up here. I don't see any other civilizations. Probably not a lot to expand up there. This might be a later on type of city. I like to forward advance, like build your next city towards them so you can kind of push out your land before they do. Because if you wait, Russia might grab these, this land while you're not looking. So I think coming towards them would be good for a next city. If you use a lens here called Settler, you can see where legal spots to start the city are. Um, I think building it on water is a good thing. These sort of look like good spots because they have medium resources. You can harvest these to gain production pretty quickly. Um, this one has a lot of food here with the rice. How about this? Because I like this spot because you can get to the water and you get to the water there. Although there's not a whole lot of advantage of having too much here unless we were going to build one of those wonders that gives you bonuses for uh, lakes. Here's another lake. This is like a super lake, lake, lake. If we build that wonder, we would probably want to build it there. Um, I can't remember the name, but it's going to be pretty long until we get that technology. I think being adjacent to wa the water is good. If we want to go with naval to attack people, that's going to be good. I like this spot right here. This can expand one, two, three to here. There's going to be a little bit of overlap here. But I think that the advantages of having the stone over here, I like this spot. Let's let's put a pin here and just as a possibility uh, there. We might change our minds, but I think so far this is probably my favorite spot. Maybe a third city could be down here. Yeah, if this is still fresh water, then that's a good third city spot. And we could look at this coast maybe as a fourth city spot. Maybe back here would be a fifth city. Just getting the idea about where we would get. Um, it's good to plan out ahead to make sure we have these places mapped out with land. This is one of my favorite parts. You can kind of plan everything out. Not gonna go too much farther. Let's see. Surprised I haven't bumped into that barbarian. Weird. Maybe that came from the one I destroyed. Maybe that was the scout from it. Yeah, because I've got all the land around here, so. Okay. We'll go ahead and skip that. Let's see. 
let's peek around here. Mountains are good for campuses, so if we're going to build a campus, having it adjacent to a mountain gives a bonus. The more mountains, the better. Here's two mountains, so down here might be a good spot. Oh, look at that. Once we uh, expand over there. Yeah, I didn't see an outpost, so let's go ahead and send this guy this direction. Slinger, head on back, we'll upgrade you to an archer. If we keep people out here, they kind of block barbarians from spawning. They don't like to go to places where there's already places you can see. They go into this place called the Fog. So they call it busting fog when you send units over there as defense. So that's always something to keep in mind. A lot of mountains over here. Let's finish this guy off. He got promoted, that's good. He can heal instantly. And get some advantage, like being able to walk, walk through hills a lot more easily, or sometimes trees, forests. I thought Clay must feel happy in the good potter's hand. Finished that pottery we were working on. We've got boosts for a lot of these. Writing is going to be key because of the campus. Bronze working, pretty good because it allows you to see where the iron is and you can plan accordingly. Iron's going to be good for different units, especially this Legion one that I need to be able to build. Let's see if we've got a way to search where our Legion falls. Iron working, which is here. So let's go ahead with bronze working. I know campus, everyone loves the campus. I don't have a whole lot of good spots for campuses right now. I guess adjacent to rainforests, but I don't think I'm adjacent to those yet. Maybe my second city will be. Um, that's kind of tricky, but let's go ahead here. I need to know where the iron is. I need to know where that legion is. That's going to be key. Especially since it looks like Russia's already stronger than me, 85. Not a lot stronger, but somewhat stronger. Uh, can I move and then promote? That'll save me a turn. Yeah, let's move. Alright, I can move faster on woods and rainforest, faster on hills. I saw a lot of forest down there. There's probably a lot more woods and rainforest. And then this woods and jungle is going to be good. These are all good. Okay. We've got the warrior. I think let's give the warrior down here. I'm glad we didn't need this military as badly as usual. This is good. Another thing about this game, you can't put two units in the same square. That's something we used to, or people used to do in Civilization 2. You put like 15 phalanxes in one spot and you don't know how many there are and you attack and you always lose because there's always somebody there to defend. That's not as much in this game, it's more spread out, open-ended, more possibilities. Uh, definitely makes it more interesting. This is a good campus spot. Um, I wonder if I took over Kumasi and then expanded with a campus there. That's an idea. Just thinking out loud. Because I get, I think it's plus two for every mountain, so I get plus two, plus two, plus two. It's like a super campus. Super campus would be all the way around. But you gotta take what you can get. And if there's not a lot of uh, other opportunities, you're gonna need technology eventually or they're gonna roll over you. The computer uh, will advance so strong in the military units will get way stronger in you. Alright, I said I would upgrade to an archer. Should we 
keep going east. Yeah, I think Russia's kind of got that pinned down over there. Found another city-state. This is Buenos Aires. You can see it's orange. Another trade route. They want a trade route also. Buenos Aires is for money. Plus two. Everywhere you saw theater on the island, this is going to give you uh, production. I, I said money. I meant production. Tuners are not traded. This has already seen Russia. Uh... This gives you amenity bo for bonus resources, so it will definitely be useful to have uh, to be on their side as well. They're also pretty close to these mountains. If I ever take them over, I might want to build a campus somewhere up there. I know I'm planning ahead, but we're going to want to plan ahead as much as we can. Um, another advance, or another idea to think about is where we're going to build an industrial zone if we're going to do that. A good spot might be here because we can get bonuses from being adjacent to mines or hills where you can build mines. Um, not a whole lot too interesting with industrial zones. Just good to keep in mind. Districts are very useful, very important to build. Uh, definitely want to look forward to plotting out where we're going to build them. Because it, when we get to four, I know we're going to bump backwards, probably back to three. It'll probably go to four and then three in a second. Um, but when we get to four, we can start our first district and we'll have to decide which one we want to do. Industrial might be a good one. Uh, this, yeah, so maybe we'll chop down with the builder, chop down those, and then put a district here. There's bonuses for having districts adjacent to your city. Um, harbor is another one that's good. I don't see a whole lot of good harbor spots. Harbors are good to be next to resources in the water. Um, if I built a harbor here, that would be adjacent to two resources. If I build a harbor here, that's adjacent to a city. I think that's probably the same bonus for having a harbor here or here. The only other bonus is if I build a harbor way back here. I can build my units to be produced out of here. And then if I build another unit, it'll get produced out of here if I've already got one in that spot, I believe. It'll choose the next spot here. So I can kind of divide and conquer depending on where I want to go. But things to think about, keep in the back of your mind as you're playing. We've got our scout still exploring. That's the coast, not a whole lot of interesting. A lot of food over here, so that'll help if I have to build on, on, on the tundra. I can just get food from here. Or the fishes. If I built a city here, and then a harbor here... Oh no, a harbor would not be adjacent to here. Oh, if I build a city here and a harbor here, it would be adjacent to here and here. So let's... Let's say this city is a potential right here. I like this idea. So that a future city, just something to keep in mind. Add attack right there. And then a harbor here. I can, you can I like this so you can build it even attack there. Just to remember. Make that a district for a harbor. And he's adjacent to water, and that'll give him fresh water, so that's even another, another advantage. Yep, I think we're on the right track with that. Alright, archers, extremely strong. What do we want to do with this archer? There's a whole lot of nothing around here. Maybe we could explore down here. He does need healed at some point. How about we move heal? <laughs> Just trying to save time. I don't know if a heal with half a movement point or one left is any better than two. It is equally important to have a happy and engaged workforce as it is to have a profitable bottom line. Finished my state workforce. Definitely want to move toward political philosophy, not close to getting this boost. 
What advantage do we have for military tradition? This just helps flanking for all units. That'll just help overall military power. Give you a bonus if you want to build units. Eventually we're going to want to build a lot more archers, I think. Um, this is only six turns. Let's try to finish this one off and get some archers later. or south. Let's check out the perimeter here of North while we can. I hope they don't grab this and pin this off. Oh, there's nothing to see in there. Another good cult, uh, campus spot if we build, if we take over Buenos Aires at some point. With the mountains there. Alright, with our faith, we were able to choose a pantheon. Pantheons are choices you can make that'll help with your bonuses. Um, oh, I see some dotted lines here. So there's a city somewhere in here that I didn't see before. Just realized that. That's interesting. I think I can cut through here because it's still dotted line. So let's look at what we got. We got a little bit of pastures, um, a little bit of forests over here, possibly more forests there in the future. Our bonuses here, we get bonus from Tundra, bonus faith, bonus from desert, don't see a lot of that. Rainforest, that might be. I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of rainforest because usually we chop them down because they're not that helpful. We'll see. Are they these? Rice's count as rainforest. How about this one? Just guessing where we're gonna end up building. No. Are these all rainforests? Plains slash rainforest. Wow, what a combo. Plains slash rainforest. Plains slash rainforest. So these three are all rainforests. So this city right here in a full ch in a uh, campus here might be good because then I got some two rainforests and if we keep them as rainforests then our rainforest pantheon might be good. How about this down here? Nope, just regular ones. Hmm. If we had this empty we could probably uh, I know you can drain a, mar drain a marsh and I think you get to keep the ingredient that used to be there. I like the reinforced one so far just because of this bonuses right here. How about down here to have rainforests? Rainforest here. So if we take over Kazan at some point, this will probably be our first enemy right there. Take that over. Let's see, we could Rivers. I don't have a whole lot of rivers, so we can get some holy sites rivers, not likely. Although, holy site... Mm, ah, that's a maybe, but probably not. Bonuses towards wonders. Those are going to be tricky, especially early on in this high difficulty. I think the odds we're going to get a wonder are slim to none. Well, we might get one wonder, and it might not even be an ancient god classical, because other civilizations are so far more advanced in the beginning with this difficulty. Divine Spark. Get bonus points for holy sites. Eh, unlikely. Marsh Oasis Floodplains. We had a little bit of marsh down there. Not a whole lot. Fishing boats. Had a little bit of fishing boats east of us. It might be another useful one. We had one right there. One, that's a whale. Wow, I don't see whales too much. It's interesting. Let's go ahead. Let's keep looking. Alright, so we have fishing boats. Pastures. We got some pastures and some culture right there. We could use that right off the bat. Do we have a lot of other pastures around here? Or is it just the capital? Not a whole lot down here. Ah, uh, okay.
we could get camps, quarries, luxury and bonus faith, mines over strategic resources. Don't have a whole lot of mines right now. Culture for all of these things. Food for all of these things. So far it's looking like pastures or rainforest are my two favorite. Border expansion 15% higher. Try to counteract Russia's border expansion up the wazoo when you start out. Harvesting resources gives you bonus faith. Production towards districts in the cities without a specialty district. Yeah, not likely going to happen. That's just the first city or first district. I think. Um, happy people, you get bonus faith. Okay, I'll stick with uh, what was I? What was I thinking? The first one was I think I think rainforest. Because we got that, we get a bonus towards mysticism. Alright, he's healed. Let's go south. Can I cut through and look around here? Nope. That would start a war. Not in the mood to start a war at this point. Not strong enough really, but... Okay, we'll, we'll go south. I could automate the scout and just let him explore wherever. Um, that would clear out fog and la leave me with not having to keep track of him. But I kind of want to keep a hands on, at least in the beginning. I think you can do a warrior into a legion, so that's going to be useful once I get that legion technology. I heard that noise, that noise, and I like this little pop-up right here. It says a new barbarian outpost was started, and it's down here. It's right by my about-to-be-new city. So this will be extremely useful. This archer will be sent down here immediately to help take it out ahead of this settler. One cool thing is you can link your settler to another unit as a, a permanent defensive unit to, to go with that unit. Um, that just might be useful here so that in case somebody sneaks in there's always somebody guarding you. So, um, finish my settler. Definitely need to get this builder. I've got some money. Should I start a builder or save the money for another unit? I'm going to want to have three archers that will help me with a boost later on. Um, I could go with, I think I think a builder is good because it got a lot of places that need uh, improved. So let's go ahead and start with the builder. Should we just go ahead and buy that builder? I'm just, I just want to catch up and, and move along faster. Greenery helps you grow faster because it gives you more food and housing for growth. Um, growing faster is key. Getting more more uh, gold and production is key. Well, food and gold is food and production. I keep calling it gold. It looks like a little gold thing. <laughs> Uh, definitely think builder would be good. Builders are key. I'll save the money just in case I need to s spit out an archer at some urgent point. Maybe if we're lucky. They will go south and I can take over the space and eliminate the rest. Uh, 
great. Um, I will send him here, but I need to keep an eye on him. I like this where you can click a far off distance and it'll project the next uh, five turns. So it'll help save time. Ваши люди жаждут познания и красоты. Но вы внушаетесь наукой и искусством. От чего же? You are way more advanced than me. I definitely want to be aware of you. You're gonna look at that. That is it. Look at that. Ten to four. That's that's crazy. That's one of the reasons I need to expand so I can start producing it faster. I think we're in a good spot for this. Here is a scout. This might have come from here. Let's put this... Do I want to stand him on the marsh? I would normally not like to do that, but because he's so weak, I think that even if he attacked, it would still be okay. And they, I don't think they attack until their base is destroyed. It's like a last ditch effort. I'm mostly just guarding to keep this space so he won't get through and start wanting to... You won't get an exclamation point from here having touched my city, or my area. <laughs> they attacked me, and they lost. Alright, well... Okie doke. Um, west or east? Let's see what's over here. Um, I don't think there's a lot here, but I just want to kind of see where the border looks like. This might be a good future city spot. I like the mountains and being near fish. It's a good harbor spot right there. Ah, here we have another barbarian base. So we're going to have to clean up that spot on the right and that spot over here. Tribal village discovered. That's that right there. So. I wonder if I can come around here and take that before the Russians do. Eh, I could also move here and cross my fingers. I think this is so much quicker that it's going to be worth it. with a pink color so they could kind of encourage him to go there. What's in here? Does it tell me? No. I think it's safer to go here. I'm going to go here and change my mind. And I probably will in the meantime. I don't underrate the value of military knowledge. But if men make war in slavish obedience to rules, they will fail. Told you they're gonna build these wonders quick. Stonehenge automatically grants you with a religion. So they probably religion wise gonna be way ahead and that's probably gonna be the goal of whoever it is. It says I have enough movement points. Oh, because I got the bonus. Look at that little bonus down here. Faster movement, woods, and rainforest. I forgot about that. I'll take it. That was 40 gold. Doesn't look like a lot, but that might be a huge advantage later on. Um, I don't know if Fortify or Skip helps more, but... Here. Oh, he had range of two. I shouldn't have moved there. That was dumb. Stupid, stupid. Okay. 
Why did he get hurt on me? Was that from me back there? Probably. Civics tree. We completed state workforce. Again, we want to move towards political philosophy. Do we think we're going to get towards six anytime soon? Probably not. Let's go ahead and work. Let's work towards this. I'll pay more attention. I'll try to catch this before it gets to halfway. Because as soon as it gets to halfway, we can boost it by getting to six. And I think we'll get to six soon. Because ideally, we would hit this. And maybe we would move on to this quickly. Um, again, we want this for the extra advantages, possibly. I'm also interested in creating a lasting legacy. Because bronze will last for thousands of years. Finished bronze working. With the bronze working, now we can see iron. So I'm going to look around for iron and see if I can find any. This will probably plan our cities and our and improvements accordingly. It allows chopping of the rainforest, so if we want to use the rainforest to increase production, we're able to do that. Um, again, I want iron working, but we should probably wait till we have an iron mine, or hopes of getting an iron mine, just because it's 29 turns. Let's stick to something a little quicker. Um, I don't see a whole lot of fish right off the coast, so I'm not in a huge hurry here. Um, yeah. Sailing will be useful eventually. We'll see that. Maybe that'll be our next one. Right. We'll see. Ah, é uma honra conhecê-lo pessoalmente. Speaking Portuguese. Parece que mentes brilhantes se Bom atraem. Bom dia, buddy. Bom dia. It is Pedro from Brazil. Honor to meet you. <laughs> Come to Brazil. Do you know how to dance samba? Yes, I do. It doesn't matter. You will enjoy the carnival regardless. Cool. We found their uh, capital. That's weird. Why is it only one? Maybe that's not their capital. Maybe that's just a city. Yeah, there's. I don't think their main one is named that. Unless. Oh, it doesn't have a star next to it. That's not their main one. That's just where he, the scout came from. That's interesting. He's really close to Buenos Aires. <laughs> Coincidence? I don't know. Let's do something. If we click on his picture, we can do something called send a delegation. And this will improve our favor and favor towards them. Right now we can view our relationship. We're a minus three. If they get too too upset with us, you can see they're neutral right now, then they might decide to just randomly start a war with us. And that would not be good. So, like I said, we would send a delegation. <laughs> Happy to welcome your delegation to our capital. That's a good sign. And they're plus three right there. So they're zero. So we just stop them right there from possibly getting So I want to see Russia and what our relationship is. Right now it's unfriendly. They're not happy with us, but let's send a delegation and see. If, oh, he won't even accept the delegation. Wow. I think he doesn't like that our technology is so far under theirs. You can see what can make them happy. Uh, if we get trade towards them, trade route, a favorable trade with them, open borders, delegation, do one of their agendas. Their agenda might be science, I don't know. Yeah, they're a westernizer. Friendly with civilizations ahead of them in science and culture. Oh, wow. They dislike backwards, less science. So they're going to be tricky. Um, we could maybe try a deal with them. Do they have any extra resources? I sure don't. <laughs> I don't even have a builder yet. 
I'm way behind. They have three cities, a five, a two, and a one. They're definitely going to be our first targets, I believe. Because of where they are and who they are. Alright, let's go ahead and do my ranged attack. Is it good? Can I walk through this one? If I move up, can I move and attack? Let's see. Is this... This is only movement one, so if I move forward, then I can attack. And look at that archer just wiped him out. Where's their main defense right here? I guess that was easy. We'll see, maybe he's hiding in the midst. I think spearmen have an advantage towards archers, or somebody has an advantage towards somebody. But, well, I could find them. this warrior, do we want to go explore around Brazil? I say sure. The more we know, the better. Even though this is risky and they might attack and kill this guy, or somebody might, in a barbarian, I think knowing where things are is very important. I didn't build more than one scout, so knowing where they are is going to be key. Should I build the warrior around here? Let's, let's save him in case we end up needing him. kind of pinned in. I can go here and back. Knowledge. Alright, let's... This is only a movement of one. So I'm going to move here and attack there, and then I'm going to move here and then here with the warrior. was a bad call. That was a woods and I forgot and I didn't realize it. Well, oh well. That's okay. Next turn. As long as I'm blocking the settler, the settler can squeeze in. You can also change places. I don't see a whole lot of advantage to that. Next turn. Alright, let's do a free attack on this spearman. Scout already got what he was looking for. Let's try down here and see what we can find. If I cross the river, that I think ends the turn. Um, this is major victory. Normally I like to do three attacks, but he might attack here, and the enemy might attack my archer. So I want to use my warrior here. Alright, let's build this city. It will remove the woods. Alright, so let's see. Did I remember? Yep. Alright, so we get to name our second city. Alright, let's check this randomized list. This is a list of the subs and possibly followers if I want to get more possibilities. The next one we have on the list, this one is Jillian G16. Alright, Jillian, welcome. We get to choose what to build in our first city. I mean, the first thing to build in our city. Um, good things to start out with. I think a builder would be useful here. A trader might be useful too. We need a trade route. I think... Builder, trader, warrior, archer. We need archers. Let's do Builder and then Archer. No, let's do Archer first. We are, our military is kind of lacking. We can get rid of this little pin here. Got that. Eventually we can choose our next city. 
I'll have to decide where to go to. This whole area looks pretty wide open, and again, it's forward settling to try to to push the enemies, uh, the Russians, from coming here. So this spot looks pretty good because it's got the sheep, it's got the wine, uh, it's got the water. Although, yeah, this is a big fresh water right here. I think these are connected by like some kind of a uh, land. So. Maybe we need some exploring over here. Anyway, I'm thinking ahead. Let's go ahead and hit next turn while we're here. This guy was going to help explore back behind. Let's finish this off with ranged attack, free attack. And then move in with the warrior. Get that out of the way. Yes another for progress. We finished, oh, progress towards political philosophy. This is what we want. So we must have found another city-state. I didn't see it, but maybe they found us. Because it just has to be, oh, it's over here. It's Carthage right there. There, there are a, uh, bonuses towards military. That is key. Let's switch to that soon. Oh, we need to finish this first. So let's finish this and let's start this political philosophy. We can speed that up by clicking on what I was showing you before. Oh, are we halfway here? I said we'd move to halfway. We're almost halfway. So let's cancel that. this right there gets to halfway, then we'll stop, switch to the other one. That way we won't waste time in uh, the spot that's going to get boosted anyway when we finish uh, growing to size 6. So that's 3 plus 1, 4. We're almost there. That one's almost there. That one's Production. We got a builder. He's completed. Greenery would be nice for growth. This city definitely needs growth. Trader's going to be useful for money. That's also going to be useful. Um, archer's good. We need a third archer. Let's go with granary. The more you grow, the faster you can grow. The faster you grow, the more you can build. And so that looks like the coast. Let's try north. I see that's the border of Russia. We got Carthage over there. I don't think they're going to attack my skin. I don't know. Should he heal or go east? How about move one and then heal? He can heal more inside our city, and we're going to want to knock that out pretty soon. Although that might be useful because that barbarian is going to attack Russia first. It might slow Russia down more than it'll bother us. Hmm. I think east over here is probably more useful, so let's move here and heal. Let's explore with the Builder. So I like this CQUI bonus where they change the color depending on what is needed right now. So our builder can benefit strongly from Bonus resources. This one's probably the most one. Let's move over here and get these forces first. Greek. Gorgoemi. Havasileia sta Sparta. Ke hagemon ton Helenon. Tis esi. Tinas nikas hoios te si angelei. They love people at war. So if we're ever at war, they'll be happy. They're kind of backwards of everybody else. They're kind of the wild card. You're, you got. You always got a few that are weird. Change information about capital? Sure, why not? They came from up here, so they might be up. Oh, they're way over here, so they're east of us. Interesting. So we got two people east of us, one person southwest of us. They're kind of far. Sparta's their capital. Interesting. Okay. 
Let's see, military wise, they are the strongest. They and Brazil are the strongest. Maybe they'll fight each other to knock each other down and then we'll we'll uh, beat the weaker of the two. City state's been already defeated. They won't tell me where. Could be anywhere on the map. Wow. By defeated, they probably mean they took it over. So if you see a city that's the same color as one of the other civilizations, that's the one. Uh, some co some civilizations love to attack city-states. Um, I think Germany might be one of them. Exploring. Oh, I found somebody else. Or I found something else. Oh, I got a new quest. Laventa. Laventa is another city-state. This one's really close to me. This one's a faith based one. So they get bonuses for faith. You can see. <clears throat> the faith bonus for the suzerain is colossal heads you can build. Uh, those are these little colossals you can build on land places like this plains. I can put a colossal head there and it gives me bonus faith. And bonus faith if it's next to a rainforest. So, colossal heads plus rainforest equals a bonus if you're the suzerain. Love it. And the bonus they want you to train a spearman to get your bonus. Okay. Where was that? That was on the scout. Keep scouting. Build me a passenger. Horseback riding. Sped up. It's going to be useful. Writing is easy. All you have to do is cross out the wrong words. <laughs> Alrighty, choosing my next research after writing. Next, we have boosted already horseback riding. Iron working is not ready yet. That's a strong unit. Melee strength 40. Oh my gosh, these are really strong. But again, I don't have a uh, iron, or at least I didn't see one. I'll look back to one when we get back here. else do we want? We can farm and get plantations, hanging gardens, the odds that we get that's pretty low. We can clear marshes, those are good. Um, let's do horseback riding. Horse, horse riders are quick and their melee strength is 36, so they're pretty strong and they can move fast. So they're going to be useful. Um, you can build a stable if you have an um, Encampment. We could build an encampment and a stable and horsemen. We have horses. Try it. Encampment. I don't usually like encampments, but in this case, that might be a key point for us. Um, we'll see. There's a lot of lakes. Look at that. There's a lake, 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 lake. This is all lakes. This whole area is all lakes. There's a wonder that has to do with lakes. I think it's called like Huey Tekalawi or something like that. Let me look at it. Yeah, Huey Teokali. I was probably pronouncing it. Sorry, Mayans. Uh, plus one amenity for entertainment for each lake tile within one tile of, of it. Oh, okay. And 
you get plus one food and plus one production for every lake in your whole empire. So this is like a plus ten plus ten amenity machine if we can get it right here. And then we get one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so. Uh, or actually here, because you don't want to cover up the uh, crabs. So if we build that here, we can get all of these ones to get bonuses. That's amenities. Oh, that's a crazy amount of amenities. That's an insane amount of amenities. Maybe we need to take over La Venta and build it right there. One, two, three. We've got space for it. Yeah. Let's mark it just for kicks. I don't know if we'll ever get to it, but if we had to do something like that, that would be good to see. Let's see, it's some kind of lake thingy. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Keep in mind, it's good to keep in mind future uh, things so you can plan around it. You kind of build your civilization close to those so they can encompass all of the things you're trying to achieve. Oh, we got another, is that, what is the... Gilgamesh oh, Kienki, Usaru Kanaku. He's kind of an interesting militaristic science kind of guy. Arts and sciences. Ziggurats. Let's make friends with him. We need to... Send a delegation. They received them. Right now he's autocracy. Interesting choice. That's kind of more militaristic. They're willing to form long-term alliances. Yeah, in the past I've done a lot of alliances and friendships with them. In fact, if we asked them, they would probably declare a friendship openly. More monger pember. Penalty none. It's still zero. Or still none. It's opportunity, right? I could, in fact, I could declare a random war on Laventa and take that over now. In fact, that might be a good movement right here. Do I have the archer? Yeah, not, not, not in the near future. Why is it taking so long? Let's see. Food. This would be plus three. Oh, it's about to grow. Where's it going to grow to? It's about to get to the rice. Rice would be plus four. We need a builder down here quick. Can we buy a builder and help him? Let's do it. We need the growth. We got extra money right now. Let's get going. I'm denounced already. Oh boy. I missed my opportunity. They're just not going to like me the whole rest of the game, probably. Rarely do I see anybody change their mind once they denounce you. That's also a good way of making me want to attack them. Even if they're far away at the moment. I could attack the scout. Uh, anyway, I've been going on pretty long. I think we made some progress here. We got Reuben and Jillian started over here. We're about to get to six and get the bonus for early empire. Who I'm glad I caught because I forgot to switch. And I'm gonna switch that right now. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and wrap it up for today. Um, definitely got some progress here. Um, We'll look forward to in the next stream. We will move on. I think what we're going to plan on doing is get attacking Laventa. There's no penalty at the moment, and that might be a good uh, to get that wonder and having more strength. That's kind of close to where we want to go to anyway. They have some mountains down there. 
Um, sorry, Laventa, but you gotta do what you gotta do. If you wanna win. Um, but anyway. Um, thanks a lot for joining me. Appreciate it. Look forward to the next one. Take it easy.